Well, hello. Thanks for coming back to check out another video. So, I am super excited to finally be back to sitting down and filming at all the best intentions in the month of May to at least keep you updated on Project Pan things and I only managed to film and edit two videos. So, very sorry about that. If you are interested in a get ready with me all about what went on in the month of May, just let me know down below. I would be more than happy to film that. But in today's video, we are here today to sit down and do a small declutter. Like in my head, this was going to go up at the end of April, 1st of May. So it was a spring declutter. I'm still going to call it that. But I really wanted to take a good hard look at my makeup collection, especially before I had to sit down and film my mid-year makeup inventory. I wanted to sit down and really think and scrutinize and get the products out of my life that just are not working for me. So that's what we're going to talk about here today. I do want to remind you guys, I always make sure that whatever I declutter from my collection has a really good home to go to, unless it is simply just too old to be passed along, then it unfortunately has to go into the bin. But usually, like 90% of the time, everything that leaves my collection has been spoken for, has a good home to go to, and I'm more than happy to send it off somewhere where it can get love, because it ain't getting love in this house, you know? So I will try my best to divide this video up with chapters so that you guys can skip around, but we just have a little bit of everything to talk about. Base products, eyeshadows, you know, blushes, things like that. I also will say that I filmed a depot with me video and like a repress with me video. I have not yet reviewed that footage, so I don't know if that will work, if I will be able to actually upload that. Um, but if I'm able to, then obviously it will be on my channel after this. But in this video, you're going to see some of the items that I did like depot and like break apart and tear away and just keep my favorite things from within the palette. So we'll, I'll point that out like as we get to them. But yeah, that's all the rambling that I have to do for you. So let me get my basket and we will get right on into this. Okay, so a little bit out of order, but I do have two like mascara type products that I'm going to be getting rid of out of my collection. So this first one is a lash primer. This is from Lancome. This is their like CILS Booster XL like mascara base. I have not opened this. I have never used this. I don't really have a thought or opinion on this. The reason I'm decluttering it is because one, I already have a lash primer that I really love. It's the Milani the Violet one. And then two, my new favorite Holy Grail drugstore mascara is the Maybelline sky high like lash sensational mascara I think that mascara does everything that I want without needing a lash primer so there's no point in me hanging on to this and just letting it collect dust and rot away within my collection when someone else could get a lot of love use and enjoyment out of this the next mascara though however is going to go into the bin because I have opened it and I have been using it and I don't feel comfortable passing something like that along to someone. So this is from Joa. This is the Lash Up Rising Waterproof Mascara. I just never really fell in love with this. This is a very like wet formula and I, I'm fine with that. Like my favorite, you know, high-end mascara, the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara, is a wet formula. And if you just open it and let it dry out for a week or two, you're fine, you're good to go. This never really did like dry out. Like it's still very wet. And I find that when I wear it, it transfers mascara to my upper like lid area. And I'm just not about that life. Like I just, I don't have time to fuss with that. I also don't like the wand or like the bristles on this. Like it's one of those more like hourglass shaped wands maybe you can tell and it just those aren't my favorite I don't feel like they give me the best like application of mascara like to get that even nice coat of mascara and then to just at the end of the day this does not compare to the Maybelline one I just I don't like it I don't want to use it so it's just going to go into the bin all right, so let's talk about a bronzer that is leaving my collection. This is the uh, Juvia's Place Bronzed Bronze. Is that really what the name of this is? Bronzed Bronze. Okay, it's a little bronzer duo. I had the medium shade. I popped out the top shadow, which was more of like a warmer, but no, not warmer. It was, it was warmer compared to this one, I feel like, but compared like on its own and with it, with other bronzers within my collection, the top shade was much more of like a neutral bronzer, which I really do love and appreciate. This bottom one is much more of like a red toned bronzer. And I just absolutely do not like those. I don't think they look good on my skin tone. I don't think that there's any amount of like blending and finagling and light handedness that I can do with this type of shade. 
and make it work for me. So I did, like I said, pop out the shade that I wanted to keep and I'm going to pass this shade along to someone else who maybe has like a deeper skin tone than me and can get use and enjoyment out of this. All right, so we have some blushes to talk about. I'm gonna get rid of my two like deluxe size Tarte blushes. There's nothing inherently wrong with the Tarte blushes. They have a great formula, they're easy to work with, and they blend out really nicely. I think that they do have a good shade range of like blushes as far as what you're looking for. These are their Amazonian clay blushes. I have the shade Exposed and Delight. The reason I'm getting rid of these is if you will recall when I ranked all of my blushes, these fell like in the middle of the pack, and the reason they fell within the middle of the pack is because I really don't think about them. I don't think to use them. I don't remember that I have them. They just sit there. Like they're just not memorable in any way compared to other blushes within my collection. So I'm just gonna pass these along. This is the shade Delight, which is the darker of the two. And then the shade Exposed. I feel like everyone has uh, the shade Exposed and the shade Party from these Tarte lines. But yeah, this is the more like kind of neutrally pinky one. So again, they're both just really pretty. It's just, I don't get any use out of them. Another blush that's leaving my collection is a huge like regret purchase. So this is from ColourPop when they did their Sailor Moon collab. This is the blush that's in the shade Cat's Eye. It is a very vibrant pink blush. Have, how often have you seen Haley wear a blush like this? Like I'm much more of like a muted blush person, you know? And I do like pink, but not bubblegum bright pink, which is what this is. So at the end of the day, it's just not something that I wanna reach for. The reason this has so much use on it, like if I bring it in, maybe you can see that there is some wear on that imprinting. Um, I had this in a project pan at one point last year and that was the only reason I like pulled this out and used it and guess what after it rolled out of that project I have yet to like touch it and use it I just don't enjoy it simply the shade of it so yeah this will be leaving my collection okay so I'm gonna let go of two of the blushes from my benefit cheek stars palette as well I'm gonna let go of the shade Dallas which is more of like a brown type blush Honestly, I can't wear it as a blush. It would probably work as a bronzer, but I already have so many bronzers within my collection and it is on the lighter side. And while I do have a more fair to light skin tone, a really, really light bronzer still does not show up on me and that's what Dallas would be. So it's just not something that I could even like change the purpose of and get it to work within my collection. I do have some friends that are lighter than I am and so I'm wondering if they would like it as a blush or maybe even to use it as a bronzer if they so choose. And then Georgia is also getting passed along within this palette. I just, Georgia to me, it's a really pretty like peachy, not peachy pink, peachy golden type of blush, but the Gold Rush blush, which I think they've discontinued, uh, that one works far better for me just for my personal preference. And so it's just two blushes that I'm never gonna reach for, so why not pass them along? Okay, so I have two cream products to talk about, a blush and a cream highlighter. So the first one is from ColourPop. This is one of their blush sticks. This is in the shade Cool It. I think at one point I had like four of these. This would make the third one that I've decluttered. I did finish one off, the shade Hen Party. So I'm really proud about that, but I just don't like this format for cream blush. I am a cream blush fiend. I love cream blushes, but I just much more prefer them to either be like liquid with a dofa applicator or to be um, like in a pan and you can just use like a stippling blush or a beauty blender to pick them up. Just the stick format is not my favorite. So there is, it's basically brand new within here. Now I did mention in my Partners in Cream update when I finished off the shade Hen Party that it didn't have a smell but that the texture of this had changed and it took on more of like a greasy kind of aspect. I did swatch this on the back of my hand before like as I was decluttering and this does not have a smell to it and it also doesn't have that same greasy feel to it that the Hen Party started to take on. So I feel safe to like pass this on and it's had minimal use of it on it from me. Okay so then the cream highlighter is from Ritual de Feel. Uh, that is, uh, it's in the shade Solaris. I, I have a friend who really loves these and raves about these. And so I had purchased some for me and I purchased some from Laura for like a Christmas birthday gift. Um, and I just, I don't really like them. I think Laura kind of has the same opinion with this particular one. I'm not sure if she has the shade Solaris or something else, but they have like a greasy feel to them. And I just find them not to be pleasant to work with and to use and enjoy. So I'm gonna pass this on to my friend who I do know actually enjoys these. This is a highlighter that has like a white slash 
transparent base we'll say and then it has like that pink flip to it so again too another reason to declutter this is because i own monster from ColourPop within their super shock highlighter formula and i love that so much it's a much better formula in my opinion for like cream highlighters and then it has that same like pink shift to it so i really don't need to keep both of these all right, let's talk about lip products and then we'll get into the eyeshadow palettes. I'm going to declutter this lip liner. This is something that is unfortunately going to have to go into the bin. This is from Essence. This is in the shade Bold. This was a very light pink lip liner, but it kind of gave me concealer lips. Like it really didn't do what I wanted it to do. I thought that this would be like a good uh like comparison for the ColourPop bff lip liner and it's just not this has dried out it's hard to work with it's on the stiff side now i will say the essence uh lip liners as a whole are on the more stiffer side they're not as creamy as some of the other lip liners that are on the market but this one is just it's like almost crumbly and it's just it feels very tuggy when you put it on your lips like the formula has changed on this so i do think that this is unfortunately expired and going to leave my collection all right, so let's talk about some like lip gloss-esque products. Now, this first one is from Bright Beauty. I thought that this was a like lip balm, like a tinted lip balm. It is a, it's in the shade Hot Fizz, or no, Orange Fizz. Um, it's not, it's a matte lip stain, and it is so uncomfortable. I did get this on sale at Sephora, and so it's not like that hard to pass it along and let go of it. I don't want to swatch out any of these things because like I said, I'm going to pass them along. Um, so I just feel weird doing that. But yeah, this is a matte lip stain and it's just, it's so drying even if you like top this off with a gloss because I do have a, an orangey base lip gloss from NYX. And they look pretty together, but it still dries the bejesus out of your lips. And it's just, I was getting like the dry flaky patches, you know? So it's just not worth the fuss and the hassle in my opinion. So I'm going to pass this along. And then I do have two lip glosses. So the first one is from ColourPop. It's an ultra glossy lip in the shade Are We Done? I have so many brown lip glosses. Brown is like my favorite lip gloss shade but using them back to back to back to back brown really starts to become not your favorite lip gloss shade you know what i mean so the color pop formula is just my least favorite out of all of the lip glosses that i have like i much more prefer the nyx or like the fenty beauty things like that so i would rather keep those ones and pass this one along this also is a shade or is a gloss that i don't believe i've used and if i have i've only used it once or twice so i feel like i could still you know give this to someone and then I have a Juvia's Place lip gloss. This is in the shade Kiss Me. This is a more opaque lip gloss, and I'm not really a fan of opaque lip glosses. I like for them to have a little bit of a color so that I can pair them with like a lips, a lipstick or a liquid lipstick, but I don't want them to like take over. You know what I mean? So this doesn't pair nicely how I want it to, and it's also this like really kind of, I don't know, dead purple lips shade in my opinion you know like i don't know why i thought this was a good idea to acquire this shade but yeah i just don't want it within my life i've only used this like two or three times and it still has the nice like vanilla cake smell to it so again i feel comfortable like passing this along Okay, I have a Rare Beauty Lip Souffle within here. This is in the shade Confident. It's kind of like that Juvia's Place lip balm, or not lip balm, lip gloss. It's that like, it's more of a pink shade than that lip gloss, but it still definitely doesn't really look right on like my skin tone and things like that. So I just wanna pass this along and um, you know, not have it sit there and rot. Uh, the lip souffles from Rare Beauty are super comfortable. I really do enjoy them. They dry down nicely. And while I still do like to top, top a lip gloss on top of them, they don't over dry your lips. Like I feel like they're comfortable even without the lip gloss on. Then I have like two, um, I, I don't wanna say bullet lipsticks, but they're like lippy sticks. Like I know that's what ColourPop calls them, but um, you know, this one's from Maybelline. So anyway, this is the ColourPop Lippy Stick in the shade 1000%. This, guys, in what universe is Haley rocking that vampy of a lip? No universe. I, not even any of the parallel universes. I can safely assure you that no one, it, at least none of none of me, is rocking this shade 1000%. I think I've only ever used that one time. And then I have this Superstay Matte Ink Crown from Maybelline. This is in the shade On The Grind. This is really pretty. This is what I would consider like my favorite everyday like 
just shade. It looks very similar to like what I have on right now. I have on Bite Beauty No Nino. And that's the thing. This is the same basically as the Bite Beauty No Nino shade. So if you were looking for that at like a cheaper price, I do recommend the Maybelline line. This is really comfortable. I feel like they perform just the same as the Bite Beauty ones and they look very similar to them like in this like little stick format, you know. It's just I have a mini size of No Nino as well as a full size. So I don't I don't need to keep this from Maybelline when I have like the other ones, you know. Okay, I am decluttering all of my Juvia's Place lipsticks. There is nothing inherently wrong with these. I think these are beautiful. These wear nicely. They smell like velvet, velvet cupcakes. They smell like vanilla cupcakes, which is really quite lovely. And I think that Juvia's Place has a great nude shade range like line. However, it's just, it's not a brand that I want to support. And I'm usually not an advocate for like, okay, I no longer support this brand. So I'm decluttering all of their stuff from them. I don't like to have that mindset. However, I am taking that approach with these lipsticks because it takes me forever and a day to use up a lipstick. It is a cream-based product and it's going to go bad much more quickly than powder-based products. So I would much rather hang on to more of my like eyeshadow palettes and things like that from Juvia's Place and get my money's worth out of them that way because I'm never going to get my money's worth out of these lipsticks and I would rather pass them on in this like barely used condition to someone who can use them. So the shades I have, just in case you're curious, are hashtag 2020, we have lady, we have me, we have muted, and we have kiwi. So like I said, those are all really pretty. I did swatch these out in a lip swatching video, or not a lip swatching video, but a swatching out my lipsticks video. So I'll leave that link down below in case you're curious to see all of those shades swatched out. But yeah, that I just feel better getting rid of them and passing them on to someone else who can use them. All right, I'm precariously balancing a bunch of palettes on my lap, so this could be a really bad thing. But let's get into the eyeshadow palettes and like the single eyeshadows that I'm going to be passing on from in my collection. So this first thing is a liquid shadow from Stila. This is one of their glitter and glows in the shade Diamond Dust. This is really pretty. Like hopefully you can see like it's a silver, uh, like a taupey silver, and it has like a bunch of glitters in it. I used to really love these. I've used up a full size and a mini size of Kit and Karma within my lifetime. No easy feat. But what I will say about this, the glitter, even with the NYX glitter glue, it still transfers to the bottom of like your eyes here. And with the shade Kitten Karma, I didn't really mind that because it was like a pink champagne type of shade. And I feel like you could still pull off that glitter fallout that happened throughout the day. This though, with it being like a taupey silver based shadow, I just don't feel like I can do that. And then trying to like wipe it away with like a brush or anything like that, it just doesn't work. It kind of ruins your makeup. So I would much rather pass this on. I've only used this like twice. I picked this up during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty in the fall 2021. So it's not even a year old. Like someone else can get a lot of good use out of that. And then I have two ColourPop Super Shock shadows that I would like to pass on. They just, they're not like shades that I like or that I get a lot of use or enjoyment out of. And they're still pretty creamy. They still have like a lot of life left to give in them. So the first one kind of pains me because I feel like everyone raves about this shade, but it's the shade Koosh, which is described as like a light taupey silver shade. I really, when I saw this, it's a cool tone shadow. It looks so pretty. I thought this would be like the perfect, like I'm in a rush to get out the door, like lid shade, you know, where you're just doing like a two shadow look. It doesn't, it doesn't do what I want it to. It's not as impactful. It's kind of muted like as far as you know just lid shades and ColourPop Super Shock shadows go and then it is a little bit too light for me I feel like it's more icy than anything else instead of like having that more like taupey grayness to that hopefully that makes sense but yeah I'm going to safely pass this along and then I have another one in the shade Empire which is a really pretty dark dark kind of like emeraldy green shadow I just never reach for shades like this. Typically, if I am going to put like a shimmer shadow on my lids, I want it to be lighter and not so like dark and grungy. So I just don't get a lot of use out of this Empire shade. And much like with the Kush shadow, I would rather pass it on while it still has life left in it. Okay, so I also have this from Sugar Drizzle Cosmetics. This is their nine pan water activated duo chrome cake eyeliner palette. What a mouthful. So this is like a bunch of like duochrome goodness just in liner form. 
I don't really do eyeliner. I like I'll put something in my waterline and that's about it. I don't do like top line or anything like that. I just don't like the look of it on myself. I had bought this though because I thought, oh, well you could just put water in it and use it as like a lid shade, you know? And then you've got nine really interesting duochrome eyeshadows, but they don't work as well as like lid shades. Like they just, they become creasy and like a little bit cakey and so it just doesn't look right. And I have tried to incorporate these and use these as like gel uh, eyeliners and I'm just still not a fan of it, don't like it. So yeah, I would like to pass this along to someone else. Okay, so now for actual eyeshadow palettes. I think it was about two or three months ago I did like a small palette declutter and palettes on the chopping block. And I have to say, since filming that video, I haven't used any of the eyeshadow palettes that were on my chopping block. So why, why, why force yourself to use them when you haven't even thought of them? You know, so I'm just going to say goodbye to those three eyeshadow palettes that were on the chopping block. To refresh your memory, I had this from Beauty Bakery. This was a palette that they came out with uh, holiday 2021 in conjunction with Target. So it's I'm with the cookie baking crew. It's a really pretty like color story. Like I think that it's different than your standard like Christmas color stories that we see because it's browns, grays, blues, and reds. The shimmer formula of this though is super dry and just not, not as impactful as like I personally want it to be. So I just don't get any enjoyment out of this palette and I feel fine letting it go. The other two palettes that were on my chopping block, one is from Jeffree Star Cosmetics. This was the mini controversy palette. I was gifted this from my cousin this i will say is a super pretty color story like i absolutely love doing blues and purples together however i have the bh cosmetics do not disturb palette which is all good purple and blue shadows so there's that right there and then this like little quad in the corner here is just like a very neutral quad with like a pop of green almost i have these shades over and over within my collection if i bring this in more closely i think you can tell like none of the imprinting on this whatsoever is worn away like i have never even like swatched this palette or used it so i think i'm just going to give it back to my cousin and tell her like hey that was really thoughtful of you to send this my way but it's just not something that i'm reaching for and the final palette that was on that chopping block series is also from juvie's place this is the saharan i will say i had like I really only got this palette for two shades, the Wodabi shade and the Kia shade here. Both of those shadows are within the Tribe palette and I much more prefer the color story of the Tribe palette to this one. I know this palette in particular is a lot of people's favorite, but it's just, it's not enough for me. I really like when shadows or when palettes have more of a 50-50 split between matte and shimmer, or I would prefer a palette to at least have more mattes or at least like within this palette's case better mattes so you only get four matte shadows within this palette you have a black like a mid-tone brown a kind of orange and then like a red shade it's just not enough in my opinion to really do a lot of like great looks you know so i just don't want this in my collection and i'm gladly going to pass this along Okay, so I have five more palettes within my lap to talk to you about. They were not represented in that small palette declutter slash makeup on the chopping block video that I referenced. Let's keep it on with the Juvia's Place trend since we just got done talking about them. So I'm just going to declutter this little Rebel Quad. This was the Honey version. I have the Mints and the Army one, and I really enjoy those, and I really enjoy the color story of them, and I think that they pair so nicely together. This Honey one just never really did it for me. There's nothing like inherently wrong with it. It's the same formula as the other two quads. I just don't reach for this, and if I do want to reach for like a darker kind of orangey brown shade, I have that in other palettes where I think of them before I think of this one, you know what I mean? And then the only shimmer shadow that you get within this palette is a darker bronzy shimmer shade. And much like I said, when I talked about the ColourPop Super Shock shadow, the shade Empire, I just don't like dark lid shades for like all over my lid, you know? So then also I have the Warrior palette from them. This was in my project level up. This was my level two palette. So I needed to hit pan on two eyeshadows, which I did do. Some of these shadows have like crumbled a little bit. It's just the nature of it. But anyway, this is a really pretty like neutral palette. This is Urban Decay Naked Honey before Naked Honey existed. However, through using this within the project level up, I just decided I am not a huge honey gold 
eyeshadow type of person, you know? And I have some honey gold shadows in other eyeshadow palettes. Like one that comes to mind right off the bat is the Natasha Denona Metropolis palette. So I don't foresee like the need to keep this around, you know? I have these shades in other palettes and it's not a color story that I'm super drawn to. So I would again, rather pass this along to someone else who can get more use out of it than I can. And then the final Juvia's Place palette that I'm going to pass along is the Nubian 2 palette. This is a really pretty like fall kind of color story. It's got a lot of great like jewel tones within it. Um, I just, I don't enjoy the color story. Like I like every shadow within this palette individually, but put them all together in this color story and I just don't like it. And much like with the Saharan palette, the few matte shades that you get within this palette, again, it's four, you get this really dark brown and then this really dark like plummy purple shadow. They both have the same level of depth to them, so I don't think that they were both needed within this palette. And then you have like this kind of baby pukey poop green shade and then like a kind of burnt orange shadow. So only having these four matte shadows, there's just not a lot that you can do with this palette. And I know you can mix and match your palettes and I do mix and match my palettes. However, the palettes that I want to keep in my collection are palettes where I want to be able to use them as standalone palettes because then I'll get more use out of them. You know what I mean? So this palette just doesn't fit that bill. Okay, so the last two palettes to talk about are from ColourPop. So the first one we will do is Blue Moon. Now my Blue Moon is going to look quite different from your Blue Moon. I did a video where I pulled out my favorite shadows from the On Cloud Blue and the Blue Moon palette. Um, I really still like this. I stand by like the color story that I made using those two palettes together. However, I just have acquired some blue, like monochromatic blue palettes that I prefer more than this. So I got in the blueberry, um, no, not blueberry. What was it? Bubblegum palette from the BH Cosmetics Sweet Shop collection. And that has a lot of the similar shades as this does. And I just prefer the BH Cosmetics formula over the ColourPop one. So I don't need to keep two very similar blue monochromatic palettes within my collection. And then the other ColourPop palette, this one kind of pains me a little bit. This is the Sailor Moon and or it's the Pretty Guardian palette, which they did as their collab palette with Sailor Moon. So I will say when I open this up, mine is gonna look a little bit different than yours if you have this. This quad right here, these are four shadows from the Lust for Dusk palette. I popped out my most favorite eyeshadows from this palette, which ended up only being four shades, and I put those in my Lust for Dusk palette and got rid of my least favorite shades from that palette. So that is why mine looks different. I just, this palette, like the shadows, other than the four that I popped out, um, the shadows in here that really spoke to me and called to me were these two right here, this like yellow and then this like pinky shadow. These just aren't up to snuff in my opinion. I have way better matte performing yellow eyeshadows within my collection that I would rather reach for. And then just a lot of this up here is like same samey neutral colors that we see a lot from ColourPop. Like they are really bad to put very, very, very similar eyeshadows within the same palette. So it's just not one that I was reaching for. A lot of the shades within this palette too also lean on the more pastel side and I am much more likely to reach for like my BH Cosmetics Lost in Los Angeles palette or like my Juvia's Place The Mints Quad, um, things like that. So I just really never think to reach for this ColourPop Sailor Moon palette. But that is it. That is all of the rambling and decluttering that I have to do for you here today. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, um, I'm probably going to film it tomorrow, but check back, keep, uh, keep posted, check back, keep posted. You can tell it's been a while since I filmed. Um, keep an eye out for a mid-year makeup inventory if that sounds exciting to you. And that is all I will say. I will leave you on that note. I hope that you're having a good day, a good night, or a good whatever. And I will catch you guys in the next one.